Okay, today we're going to talk about how DNA sends its message out to make protein. This process is called transcription. The genetic code is the sequence of bases in DNA. Is that the first of two stages? Yes, uh, there are two stages. Transcription happens before translation, which you'll learn about in the next video. So in, in eukaryotes, where does transcription occur, or where does it happen? Well, transcription occurs in the nucleus. Remember, that's the membrane-bound organelle that uh, contains the DNA. DNA sends its message out of the nucleus using uh, mRNA, which is another nucleic acid. So transcription takes place in the nucleus. Yes, you've got it. Uh, like in DNA replication, remember the molecule untwists and separates using the enzyme? Uh, in this case, um, for RNA, uh, for transcription, we use an enzyme called RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase opens up the double helix? Yes, it does. Uh, the template strand is one of the two sides of the DNA molecule. And so the template strand is going to be copied into mRNA, which is um, a single strand. You're going to find out in a little bit um, how that compares to DNA. RNA polymerase adds bases to complement the DNA. Um, the non-template strand is the other DNA strand that's not being copied. Um, and uh, it's not being copied during transcription, so it just kind of hangs out and waits until one, the, the first side is copied. So RNA polymerase opens up the DNA molecule and adds, and adds back together those bases, those yes. homogenous bases. That's an incredible enzyme that has wow. two jobs opens up the DNA and then adds the bases. So um, I wanted you to know too that RNA does not have the base called thymine like DNA does. Instead it has the base uracil. Um, uracil will um, pair up with um, adenine. So uracil and RNA will pair, pair up with adenine in uh, DNA. Um, but RNA besides having uracil also has adenine cytosine and guanine. So how do the bases pair up again? Well, in DNA, adenine will pair with the uracil in RNA. Um, also, the C in DNA will pair with the G in RNA. The G in the DNA will pair with the C in RNA. And then thymine in DNA will pair with adenine in RNA. And I'll draw this out for you on a, on a slide in a little while here. So RNA has uracil, but not thymine. That's right. Um, so have you wondered what mRNA means? I have. mRNA means messenger RNA. It takes the message from the DNA out through the nuclear pores and into the cytoplasm. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I remember that you said that we said that uh, DNA is way too big to travel out through that nuclear pore. So messenger RNA is much smaller? It is. It's single-stranded and it's a smaller molecule than DNA. And it can fit through the pores and get out of the nucleus. Um, so mRNA then goes into the cytoplasm to find ribosomes. And as you remember, uh, ribosomes make protein. And uh, the second part, which you're going to find out about in the next video. A review of DNA. DNA's shape is a double helix. The four bases that make up DNA are A, T, G, and C. And DNA is located in the nucleus in eukaryotes. In DNA, adenine pairs with thymine, and guanine pairs with cytosine. Remember, the bases in DNA are the genetic code. The sequence of the bases determines the traits or characteristics of that organism. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. The ribo is in relation to ribose, the sugar. Ribonucleic acid is single-stranded. Remember that when RNA binds to DNA, there's no thymine in RNA. Uh, for every DNA adenine, RNA uracil binds with A. Uh, for every DNA thymine, adenine binds with it in RNA. For every DNA guanine, cytosine binds with it in RNA. For every base that's a cytosine in DNA, guanine in RNA binds with it. In RNA, 
Uracil, adenine, guanine, and cytosine are the bases. RNA just has one sugar phosphate backbone compared to two in DNA. This diagram shows transcription. Remember, transcription is the process of making RNA from DNA, and this occurs in nucleus and eukaryotes. Notice the template strand and the non-template strand. Notice also RNA polymerase, which has two jobs in transcription. First, it opens up the DNA double helix, and second, it brings in new nucleotides to add to build the RNA molecule. Remember, RNA molecule is single-stranded while DNA is double-stranded. It's called translation. So we're going to compare DNA and RNA. So DNA is double-stranded while RNA is single-stranded. Um, DNA has um, thymine, whereas RNA has uracil. Uh, DNA has a deoxyribose sugar, while RNA has ribose sugar. And uh, DNA, DNA does not leave the nucleus in this case, but RNA is able to move out into the cytoplasm, so it gets to travel. Um, then, so, so now I know how DNA gets its message out of the nucleus so that proteins can be made. So this genetic code, is, is it found in all... This diagram compares RNA on the left with DNA on the right. Notice the single strand of RNA and the double strand of DNA. Both have sugar phosphate backbones and are shaped like a helix. There are base pairs in DNA and there are single bases in RNA. Notice on the left side, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and uracil are the bases for RNA. And on the right side, uh, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine are the bases. Notice uh, those that have a double ring, which are called purines, and those that have a single ring that are called pyrimidines. All organisms? Yes, the genetic code is found in all organisms, from the tiniest bacterial cell to the giant blue whale to all kinds of trees, plants, fungi, protists. Very interesting. The genetic code is a sequence of bases. The genetic code is common to all organisms. Everything about organisms is determined by DNA, which holds the genetic code in the order of bases. Protein synthesis involves transferring information from DNA to mRNA, then from mRNA to proteins.